Hey guys, and welcome to Hala Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is hypoglycemia. So let's get started. So what is hypoglycemia? So hypoglycemia occurs when we have a reduction in the plasma glucose concentration to a level that may go on to induce symptoms or signs such as an altered mental status and sympathetic nervous system stimulation. It usually arises from an abnormality in glucose homeostasis. So from this definition, we get that hypoglycemia is a condition that occurs when the blood sugar levels are too low. And some of the symptoms that may occur here are the altered mental status, shakiness, fast heartbeat, sweating, and headache. And it is usually related to patients who suffer from diabetes or an abnormality in glucose homeostasis. And of course, the blood sugar levels can be raised with fast-acting carbohydrates. So that's basically what hypoglycemia is. Hypoglycemia is when we have blood sugar levels which are too low for the body to handle. So what is the range of hypoglycemia? So normally, the range of blood glucose levels is from 70 mg per deciliter to 100 mg per deciliter in a normal healthy individual. So any value below 70 mg per deciliter is usually considered hypoglycemia. And the glucose level at which an individual usually becomes symptomatic, however, is highly variable, but the threshold is generally below 50 mg per deciliter. So normally our blood glucose levels range between 70 and 100 mg per deciliter. Anything below 70 mg per deciliter will be considered hypoglycemia. But the onset of symptoms, which is the altered mental status, the shakiness, the tachycardia, which is the fast heartbeat, the sweating, and the headaches usually start occurring when our blood sugar levels drop below 50 mg per deciliter. So this is our normal level of blood sugar in this test tube. And as we can see what the picture of hypoglycemia looks, we don't have enough sugar. And hyperglycemia, which is too much blood sugar, looks something like this. So continuing with some signs and symptoms, so we did mention a few, which is the altered mental status, the shakiness, the sweatiness, uh, but here are a few more. So feeling shaky, being nervous or anxious, sweating, chills and clamminess, irritability or impatience, confusion, a fast heartbeat, which is called tachycardia, feeling lightheaded or dizzy, feeling hungry, suffering from nausea, color draining from the skin, which is pallor, these patients go pale in the face, they feel sleepy, they feel weak or like they have no energy, they have blurred or impaired vision, a tingling or numbness in the lips, tongue or cheeks, headaches, coordination problems and clumsiness, nightmares or crying out during sleep, and in very severe cases, they may suffer from seizures. So as we mentioned in the first slide, the majority of cases are actually diabetes related. So let's take a closer look at the diabetes-related causes of hyperglycemia. So patients with diabetes don't make enough insulin in diabetes type 1, or the insulin they do produce may be less responsive in type 2 diabetes. Because of this, glucose builds up in the bloodstream and may reach dangerously high levels. So to correct this problem, patients usually take insulin or other drugs to lower their blood sugar levels, and this may go on to cause hyperglycemia. So in patients who suffer from diabetes, we have this high blood sugar levels, it's hyperglycemia, and then we administer some drugs to them to lower their glucose levels. And in doing so, sometimes we can actually take that hyperglycemia to a form of hypoglycemia, which means we administer either too much medication or the patient takes an overdose of the medication, so we have a severe drop in their blood sugar levels, which is the cause of hyperglycemia. So hyperglycemia may also occur in these patients if they don't eat as much food as they usually do after taking diabetes medication or if they exercise more than they usually would. So if they don't take in enough food as they usually would, the effect of the medication will obviously be too strong and it'll cause the blood sugar levels to drop. And if they exercise more, exercise uses a lot of our blood glucose levels. So if they exercise a lot and then they take their blood glucose lowering medications, on top of this, then it would cause a severe drop in the blood glucose. So again, we'll have a hyperglycemia here. So in this little table on my right, it just says what happens in healthy individuals and what happens in patients with diabetes. So in healthy individuals, we have low blood sugar, which is called hyperglycemia, and then the glucagon will increase and symptoms such as shakiness, sweating, and hunger to encourage the person to eat. 
But in patients who suffer from insulin-dependent diabetes, we will have that imperfect insulin dosing, which means that the patient either takes too much or they do more exercise than they usually would or they eat too less compared to what they usually would. And we have the reduced glucagon and reduced symptoms and they have more frequent and more severe low blood sugars and less glucagon released and unawareness to symptoms and the cycle continues. And that's how this can actually cause recurrent hypoglycemia in these patients. So now let's discuss some non-diabetes related causes of hyperglycemia. So medications. So a patient who is not diagnosed with diabetes may accidentally consume a diabetic patient's oral medication. So in this case, their blood sugar levels will severely drop and they will suffer a hypoglycemic attack. Excessive alcohol consumption. So drinking great amounts of alcohol without eating any foods blocks the liver from releasing stored glucose into the bloodstream. And this goes on to cause hyperglycemia. So some critical illnesses, such as severe liver disease, which includes hepatitis, can also cause hyperglycemia. Insulin overproduction. So sometimes we have rare tumors of the pancreas, which is called insulomas. And this will cause an overproduction of insulin and the excess of insulin release, which will go on to cause hyperglycemia. Hormone deficiencies. So disorders of the adrenal glands and the pituitary gland can also result in a deficiency of key hormones that regulate the glucose production. And another cause is that children may also experience hyperglycemia if they have a deficiency in the growth hormone. So these are all non-diabetic related causes of hyperglycemia. So the diagnosis of hyperglycemia. So the best thing to do is to test the blood glucose level, especially when the patient is symptomatic. So as we said, anything below 70 milligrams per deciliter will be considered hyperglycemia. Treatment of hyperglycemia. So the immediate and initial treatment is to raise the patient's blood sugar levels. So this can usually be treated by consuming approximately 15 to 20 grams of a fast acting carbohydrate. So fast acting carbohydrates are foods that are easily converted to sugar in the body, such as glucose tablets, glucose gels, fruit juices, sugary soft drinks, and sugary candy, such as licorice. The blood sugar levels are checked again after 15 minutes after the treatment. And if the blood sugar levels are still under 70 milligrams per deciliter, we treat again with another 15 to 20 milligrams of a fast acting carbohydrate. And we recheck the blood sugar level again in 15 minutes. And these steps are repeated until the blood sugar level eventually rises above 70 milligrams per deciliter. So if the hyperglycemia is caused by an underlying condition, such as a tumor, such as an insuloma, remember we mentioned in the pancreas, this must be treated by surgical removal of the tumor. And if medications are the cause of hyperglycemia, the doctor will likely suggest changing the medication or adjusting the dosage. And that brings us to the end of this video on hyperglycemia. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And please make sure to turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.